Hey, this is Matt once again. We're about to the videos. Another paid request this time from John McKinney. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for The Jungle Book from 1994, which I might have seen this film only once back in the day. Been a long while. But ended up liking, liking it and watch it again. It's directed by Steven Summers, who would go on to direct Deep Rising with Tree Williams, The Mummy with Brendan Fraser in 1999, uh, G.I. Joe, and Van Helsing. I think by this point he had done The Adventures of Hut Finn and maybe one or two other movies. And the film stars Jason Scott Lee, who had been in Driving the Bruce Lee Story, Terry Ellis from The Princess Bride, Sam Neill, from In the Mouth of Madness, among other films. Lena Headey, who had gone to be Mama, the, the evil drug lord lady in Dread. And she'd be Sarah Connor in the Sarah Connor Chronicles TV show. And it's more of an Indiana Jones type of adventure take on the Jungle Book. In fact, for what I understand, because I never read the source material, you know, people say that this doesn't really have much to do with the Jungle Book of the day I mean it's definitely not like the animated film I mean you do have Mowgli you have the bear Baloo you have the Team Louie in a way you do you have the panther you have Shere Khan the tiger so they're in there it's just done in its own different way which I was fine with because I have no deep connection with the source material I guess you say this is the first live action remake that Disney ever did. But the fact that it's not a carbon copy of the original animated film, that was nice to see. Felt more of a breath of fresh air. The fact that pretty much all done with real animals. Makes I mean you can't get more real than real, so you give that more of a sense of danger or some of the other animals or it just you can more get involved with the story because you're not seeing some... Other than one bit, there's one bit with an anaconda where you see the body is practical, but they have like a quick shot of its head. And it's really dated CGI. But I, th I think that's the only time I saw that in the movie, uh, CG-wise, and... Thankfully, it was quick enough, but it was definitely noticeable at the same time. But real tiger, real panther, real monkeys, real orangutan, real uh, bears, real wolves. So that was nice to see how they were all utilized. Because that must have been tough to, to work with all these animals and make sure you're on a consistent basis with your schedule. The music is by Basil Polidoras. Basil Polidoras had done Robocop and many other musical stores. Uh, Conan the Barbarian, so always nice to have him in there. Uh, good cast, that definitely helps. Carrie always plays such a prickly villain, so just you want to punch him in the face, but he, he does a good job with that. Lena Headey plays the love interest. Samuel plays her father. John Cleese is in the film. As his doctor. I forgot that all these people were in the movie. And I like Jason Scott I do. I think Sally, his career did not flourish as it should have. Because Dryden the Bruce Lee story made a bit of wave here and there. I don't know if this did. He didn't get to do a whole lot of films afterward. He was in Soldier with Kurt Russell in 1998. Eight. He was in that director video movie Time Cop 2, which I don't like the film, but it's not his fault. He was in those director video Dracula movies, Dracula 2 and Dracula 3, which I didn't like the way that all ended, especially for Jason Stiley's character, so it made me not really care for the film. Films, I should say. 
Because where it led up to, I thought it was really lame and lackluster, in my opinion. I know he was in a Mummy movie, and that also had a really lame ending, Tells the Mummy. <coughs> At least an ending that I did not prefer, or like, just my own personal opinion and taste. So he's done work, but he just never became a big star, which is a shame, because I think he has... As mo uh, much older Mowgli, he has the he did handle action scenes. He had a certain innocence to him. You could buy him learning the language, but you also he just seemed believable in the role. Like he just fit the role. He didn't feel out of place. And then the film itself, he has some nice jungle locations I believe they shot it in India so there's some nice backdrops the action sequences are serviceable but not when you say Indiana Jones type of movie they're not grand and they're not as memorable as they could have been I mean even when you look at films like The Phantom with Billy Zane and those action scenes kind of straight out a bit more compared to this. And of course, Steven Summers would do a lot better in that venue with Deep Rising. And all the action on the, the cruise liner. And definitely The Mummy. This almost seems like a warm-up for when he would do The Mummy. Another Indiana Jones type of movie. But that one, he had a lot more, maybe it's budget. Or maybe just he had a lot more of a comfortable nature to deal with the action scenes. Because he had not really handled much of that before. So maybe this is him dipping his toe in. And then. Was able to get more complicated. Stellar action scenes later on. So I will say sometimes the. Uh, it felt a bit lacking. There's not like a lot of big. Moments that make you go whoa. Action wise. But at the same time, because of the cast and the use of the real animals and the, the fact that it took itself pretty serious, it just made sort of more of a fresh retelling uh, for this adaptation. And better than anything I've seen in those new Jungle Book films. Like the, was it one John Favreau did? I believe it was John Favreau. And everything looks CGI and fake and phony. And then, was it Andy Serkis did one called Mowgli? And those effects looked worse and cheaper. And those are trying to be a bit, I think Mowgli trying to be a bit more dark compared to the other Jungle Book. But they're still trying to be very reminiscent of the cartoon. And this one just felt like its own animal, no pun intended. Whether it be from the beginning where he's with his dad and his dad tells him about the different animals out there. As well as Shere Khan who's a tiger that doesn't like that man is taking too much. So he's kind of not really a villain. Just kind of like an anti-hero in a way. He wants to protect his own domain. So Shere Khan comes in and attacks the camp. And... Some people get killed, as much as you get away with, with the PG rating. So there's not a whole lot you're going to see, but it does attack the camp. The dad dies, the Sam Neill's trying to help, trying to save the guy, trying to get the kid. He's not able to do it. The kid's on this wagon that goes off the rails, and the horses keep drawing the wagon away from camp. And there's, of course, a bunch of barrels that are ready to explode. And the kid's able to get the hell out of Dodge. And he has like this pet baby wolf, which was cute. The people at the camp assume that the kid's dead. The kid wanders into the the, fort, the jungle. And one thing leads to another. We see how he kind of beats these other animals. Beats the panther. Don't want to know why the panther takes such a liking to Mowgli right off the bat. But it does, I guess. So the story continues. He even uses his tail. Like, come on, grab my tail, kid. And leads the kid away to safety. 
the kids find a bunch of wolves. I guess the wolves just look at the kid, they see that he has a baby wolf, and they say, okay, maybe this guy's cool enough to join our group. The wolf pack. And not the NWO Red wolf pack, this is a different wolf pack. Because he does say later on, what was the line, I run with the wolf pack. <laughs> and for a split second I had the NWO Red logo in my mind. He also does help a bear get out of a tree. I kind of wonder how they did that, because it does look like they just stuck a bear's head to be stuck in a tree log. Now, maybe they did some practical effects on that, but it, I don't know, it looked like a real bear cub they just put stuck in the fucking hole of a tree. If, if that was the case... A bit suspect with the usage of animals. Or if it was an effect that was done fairly well, I don't know. Because, I mean, there's not, other than I'm making up from back to the day, but there's really. Actually, I don't know what the physical release of this is. I don't know if there's a commentary or anything of sort that talks about that. But he does help the bear cub, and of course it's going to be Baloo who becomes endeared towards the kid. And then it kind of cuts to him growing up. So it would have been nice to see a bit more of a transition of him learning the ropes. Like what does the kid eat? Uh, the kid learning maybe how to swing, learning how to jump, learning certain things, even in a montage. Would have been nice to see a bit of that, but instead we cut to him being much more grown up into Jason Scott Lee's form. And one of the first bits that happens is he's sleeping and this trinket he was given to as a kid by this girl gets stolen by a monkey. He follows it to this lost city where there's a writing teen, Teen Louie, drops it there. Where there's an anaconda, and then our hero fights the anaconda. It didn't get a little CG head, but most of it's done practically. And it can't be that violent because it's PG. And this is 1994 PG. This isn't like Indian Jones Temple of Doom PG, where you have to rip hearts out. No, this day you have the PG 13. Actually, let me look. Was it PG or was it PG 13? I want to double check that. Because I think it's PG. Anyway, you, you don't see much regardless. But he does kill the motherfucker as he deserves. And the monkey's like, oh wow, this guy's pretty cool. And Again, I like the way th they utilize the animals. Like Teen Louie kind of looks at him. Fine, here's your shit bat. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Fine, buddy. Ciao. See, does it say rating? Yeah, it says PG. Does this mean so they couldn't do a whole lot with 90s PG? That's where Parby kind of went, you know, just go with the. I just want to look up any other info I could. Sorry about that. But, you know, I did like that scene. I do like, they said, the usage of the real animals. I think they, they did good with the trainers and the animal handlers. One thing leads to another. There's a grown, the girl that gave him the treaty back in the day. She's grown up. She's the daughter of Sam Neill. She's out there. Terry Ellis is her fiance, or soon to be fiance. She she just doesn't know it yet. And like I say it's one of those movies where I do like it. I do think it's decently fun. Sometimes like there's a bit missing of the some some magic is missing. I don't know what it is. If there's certain things. That maybe Steven Summers 
he still had a couple things to learn as a director, storytelling wise. Like you would think, okay, maybe there'd be a shot of him watching these inhabitants and what's going on and studying. Then he sees the girl and like notices her more and more from afar. And goes, hmm, maybe I should get closer. Instead, just the girl runs, wanders to the jungle and then there's Mowgli standing there with a bunch of clothes on. It took me a minute to go, where the fuck did he get the clothes? I guess from where he fought the Anaconda, because it was a treasure room, and I guess there were clothes in, but you think maybe there'd be a moment where, like, he takes the clothes, or is like, what is this? Like, puts it on. It just seemed almost abrupt that he's standing there with a whole full set of clothes on. I felt like maybe there'd be, like, a bit more of a proper build-up. I did like, between being a kid to an adult, Maybe showing him learning the ropes, what to eat, where to sleep, all that stuff. Of learning to live in the jungle. Same with maybe him seeing the girl and or how he got these clothes in detail wise and being fascinated and he gets closer and him contemplating her. Like little these little things in between that would have little I's dot T's to cross with the story. It's not a big deal, but it's just one of those things I'm like, okay. Just feel like there's a little bit of magic missing. But not enough to deter my enjoyment of the movie. I don't know how else to word it. And this Terry Alwis, he's being a prick. And they're, they're fucked with him, and he doesn't know what a gun is. They wound him, he runs away. Later on, he starts following her. Which are turn because he's kind of just sitting there with the animals. Then he sees, I just this place where her and everybody else are at. He goes to the market. There's a bit of a chase. Where's there some fun bit here and there with that chase? Like there's a guy playing a flute, and the rope is going up. Like you see, old days would happen in cartoons, or it would be a snake. But apparently there's real magic, or how the hell, they don't explain how the rope is going up, so you think maybe there's some trick to it, but maybe, I guess in this movie it's just magic, because he does climb the rope, and he gets away, and when the other guy does, the guy goes, and he stops playing, the guy falls, so... Great, I don't know how some of them did it in the real world. But, you know, probably some, like, magic type of trick, but they don't showcase that in this. Here, it seems like it just was real fucking magic that made that rope go up. Ultimately, he gets caught. He just jailed. The girl puts two and two together, tells her dad that's Mowgli. They decide to tr uh, teach him how to talk, teach him words. I did laugh at this bit, but... It did remind me of Raiders of the Lost Ark. I have a feeling that's where they got this. Where John Cleese is teaching them and they look in a mirror and Mowgli freaks out. He flips the mirror up and it goes up and it smacks John Cleese in the face. Now I did laugh. But it reminds me of Raiders of the Lost Ark when Marion did that and you're ah and Indy's like this. And she's like, Do you say something? So it makes me wonder, Indiana Jones is definitely an inspiration for this iteration, if that was his nod to Indiana Jones, that mirror bit. Maybe not, but it still made me laugh. And it's cool to have John Cleese in there, as his doctor is also a teacher. He learns English pretty quickly, though. I'll say, he learns in what feels like a couple days. <laughs> it would take me a lot longer. And Terry Ellis is being a dick about killing. And Mold was like, well, why do you kill? You To eat? No. Then why do you kill? Kill the enemy. What does enemy? Someone I hate. What does hate? Now, that sounds like 20 dialogue, but I do think Jesus God Lee makes you believe in Mowgli's innocence. Like, he's grown his, his whole life to just... Eat, you kill what you eat, and that's why you do it. 
but the fact there's enjoyment or hate or anything in between it's just such a confusing concept for Mowgli that as he puts it the more I hear about man I want to be an animal and I guess I, more I think about it as I'm kind of thinking of the way the world is today how humanity is trust me there's a lot of days where I agree with him and I'm like I don't blame the guy Harvey's like, I'd rather be an animal too with some of the ways some of these fucking people think. You don't see them wasting each other for a goddamn percentage. <laughs> so he's being taught, but he's being fucked around and fucked with. And gets to a point where even he's like, listen, I run with the wolf pack, you run with the man pack. Which, again, that's not Jason Dotley's fault. It'd be hard for anybody to make that line work. But his innocence that he showcases for Mowgli helps. Getting more into spoilers, at the end of the day, he's going go to go back to the animal world. Terry Ellis found this other trinket that Mowgli had, so he knows there must be treasure in the city. Wants to know where it's at. Knows that he likes this girl, so they kidnap the girl, so Mowgli will come to them and will threaten her. You show us where the city's at. That does happen. He saves the doctor. Please help my friend the bear Baloo, because he got wounded. And pretty much he finds the group and leads them to the city. <clears throat> People get knocked off one by one. Whether by quitsand or Shere Khan attacks. Uh, Mowgli does fuck up one guy because they're fighting on a cliff and he hits the guy. And the guy, he's too stupid enough to drop the boulder he's holding so he falls off the cliff. Probably the one that was the most effective was this guy... Being too greedy, not knowing his environment, tries to tap boldly, but starts this trap room. And it comes down <clears throat> with sand and it buries the guy alive. Pretty intense for a PG movie for kids. I can imagine a kid watching this thinking of the animated Jungle Book. Then they see a guy buried alive and they go, what the fuck? <laughs> Though for me, I'd be like, yeah, get him Mowgli. Although, I didn't, he didn't do anything, just the guy, he just avoided the guy's strikes and the guy ended himself. Which is just the point that keep Mowgli's innocence, that he's just not, the only person he killed was in self-defense, and the guy, he fell off the cliff. Kind of like Rambo in First Blood. He threw the rock and the guy was too stupid up to have a seatbelt. When he's in a fucking chopper. He does fight Terry Elwes, where the, he's blocked and stuff, and he's able to maneuver, be faster, be quicker, and wound the guy. And Terry Elwes' greed gets the best of him. He gets fucked up by Anaconda. And then there's Shere Khan, and he remembers something that his dad mentioned where he was talking about Shere Khan, and as a kid, Mowgli said, I had this dream that if I show no fear to him, I will be accepted. So this is what he does. It's maybe not the most exciting confrontation because it's just Jason's Dolly going <laughs> <laughs> as Sheer Khan looks go, this dude's fucking crazy. I better leave him alone. More like, okay, I accept you, pal. Sorry I killed your dad, but I get you, man. You're not an asshole. You're one of us. I do like the detail that they have the tiger do this kind of chuffing sound, which is what tigers do when they're more calmer. So I like that little detail they add in. And also probably the only Jungle Boat adaptation that Shere Khan is not an outright villain who gets defeated, killed, or anything. So in a way, Shere Khan is, I don't know if you say redeemed, but 
He's not uh, just Steven Summers. I know he didn't want to kill the tiger because he he loves tigers. I don't blame him. Tigers are cool. I have the tiger. Come on now. But I mean, there's, there's not some big confrontation, but you know, so it's still a nice little scene there. And things end happily. Sam Neil gets saved. The bear gets healthier. Our two leads kiss. And like I say, it's a nice, fun enough adventure with a pretty decent cast, some good backdrop locations, great usage of real life animals. I said the action adventure element is nothing that's going to be of note to really talk about. Sometimes there's little bits of storytelling that I can see this guy still finding his way as a storyteller, and I think Deep Rising and and Mummy, he was a bit more comfortable as a director. Oh, another actor, Jason Fleming, who will be in Deep Rising, is one of the Mercs. He's in this as one of the people working with Terry Ellis. He's the one that gets fucked up by the, the Tiger later on. Did some good stunts, like when people get grabbed by tigers and animals, I know they got like pads and shit on, but when you got an animal jumping on you, that heavy and that big, I don't know man, that's still, give me heart palpitations. But that stuff, I mean, being real makes you a bit more involved with the, the scene. Although I guarantee you this was still at more well, actually, I did see that movie. I was going to say, the Legend of Tarzan movie that came out with Sam Jackson was in it. I enjoy this a lot more than that. I guess I think of that because they're both people in the jungle, meet a lady, fall in love, deal with the animals, trying to be an action adventure. But this one, because a lot of it's shot for real and done for real, there's much more for me the viewer to easily be brought into that world I think Jesus Guy Lee had a bit more of a leading man present compared to whoever that one guy was in Tarzan and didn't care about that movie didn't even, I don't even think I reviewed it because I didn't I don't think I did because I didn't give a shit this I do give a shit so this is pretty decent Probably my favorite iteration of Jungle Book. I don't mind the anime film, but I like the more serious approach this took. Just more my cup of tea as for me being older. So overall, and yeah, better than the new ones, I'll say that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.